When people come from all parts of the United States, some states are closer than others, one little state is very far away from. So it was a long journey over here, but we are very, very happy to see our main speaker, whom everybody here in the hills are expecting to see and listen to now, Richard Chamberlain. Thank you. Your Royal Highness, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Ambassador, and Mr. President, I'm very honored to be here and very moved by this joyous expression of friendship between our two distant but very close nations. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my Danish hosts and Rebelt for the most generous and gracious and friendly and humorous um, reception I've ever received in my life. Tusentak. Uh, Tusentak. Now, we all know that we humans are recklessly abusing this spinning ball of earth which we live on and which gives us life. I'll leave it to others more scientifically inclined than I to discuss the myriad problems of the damage and the pollution and the uh, practical remedies. It seems to me that there's another area of these immense environmental problems which is rarely discussed. And that's our personal relationship, or lack of it, with the earth, with nature. My premise is this, if we love the earth, the way we love the person dearest to us, the way we love our families, the way we love our home, we couldn't possibly abuse it and devour it the way we're doing now. There was a time when our ancestors, living on the land, hunting, growing their own crops, were fully aware of the obvious fact that they were part of nature's family that the earth created and sustained them, that the earth, seas, and sky were teeming with life, full of spirit and meaning. Well, all that has changed. Now most of us live far from nature in man-made cities. The animals, fish, and plants that we eat are no longer our respected fellow beings, but just little bits of food that happen to arrive in convenient little packages. We just don't know the earth anymore. We've fallen out of love. Even some of our religions deny the holiness of nature and place God and goodness elsewhere. We've somehow come to believe that we humans were dropped down on the earth from some spiritually superior plane, that while we're here, we may use this inert, dumb planet any way we please, and then when we die, we whiz back to some nirvana or heaven where we really belong. The American Indians had a totally different relationship with the earth, a sense of oneness with nature, which can, if we consider it deeply, teach us a great deal. This profound relationship with nature was brilliantly expressed by Chief Seattle in about 1854. The federal government uh, was making inquiries about buying the Indian lands in the, from some of the tribes in the Northwest. And Chief Seattle wrote the following reply to the president. The president in Washington sends word that he wishes to buy our land. But how can you sell or buy the sky, the land? The idea is strange to us. If we do not own the freshness of the air, the sparkle of the water, how can you buy it? Every part of this earth is sacred to us. Every shining pine needle, every sandy shore, every mist in the dark woods, every meadow, every humming insect, all are holy in the memory and experience of my people. We know the sap that courses through the trees 
as we know the blood that courses through our veins. We are part of the earth, and it is part of us. The perfumed flowers are our sisters. The bear and the deer, the great eagle, are our brothers. The rocky crests, the juices in the meadow, the body heat of the pony and man are all part of the same family. The shining water that moves in the streams and rivers is not just water, but the blood of our ancestors. If we sell you our land, you must remember that it is sacred. Each ghostly reflection in the clear waters of the lakes tells of events and memories in the life of my people. The water's murmur is the voice of my father's father. The rivers are our brothers. They quench our thirst. They carry our canoes and feed our children. So you must give the rivers the kindness you would give any brother. If we sell you our land, remember that the air is precious to us, that the air shares its spirit with all the life it supports. The wind that gave our grandfather his first breath also receives his last sigh. The wind also gives our children the spirit of life. So if we sell you our land, you must keep it apart and sacred as a place where man can go to taste the wind that is sweetened by the meadow flowers. Will you teach your children what we have taught our children? That the earth is our mother. What befalls the earth befalls all the sons of the earth. This we know. The earth does not belong to man. Man belongs to the earth. All things are connected by the blood that unites us all. Man did not weave the web of life. He is merely a strand in it. Whatever he does to the web, he does also to himself. One thing we know, our God is also your God. The earth is precious to him, and to harm the earth is to, reap, is to heap contempt on its creator. Your destiny is a mystery to us. What will happen when the buffalo are all slaughtered, the wild horses tamed? What will happen when the secret corners of the forest are heavy with the scent of many men and the view of the ripe hills is blotted by talking wires? Where will the thicket be? Gone. Where will the eagle be? Gone. And what is it to say goodbye to the pony and the hunt? The end of living and the beginning of survival. When the last red man has vanished from his wilderness and his memory is only the shadow of a cloud moving over the prairie, will these shores and forests still be here? Will there be any part of the spirit of my people left? We love this earth as a newborn loves its mother's heartbeat. So if we sell you our land, love it as we have loved it. Care for it as we have cared for it. Hold in your mind the memory of the land as it, as it is when you receive it. Preserve the land for all children and love it as God loves us all. As we are part of the land, you too are part of the land. This earth is precious to us. It is also precious to you. One thing we know, there is only one God. No man, be he red man or white man, can be a part. We are brothers, after all. It would be my wish for all of us that we might spend a bit more time and a bit more deep thought about our relationship to this glorious place where we live. And then perhaps the sacrifices we're going to have to make for the environment will be motivated not only by our need for self-preservation, but by love. Thank you.
Og det var så den amerikanske hovedtaler, Richard Chamberlain. Han har i mange år boet i Los Angeles, hvor han har indspillet talrige film og tv-stykker. Men han er nu flyttet til Hawaii for at nyde naturen og friheden der. And when you decide, let me know, we'll make a copy of it. So far, Richard Chamberlain, hereby receiving the certificate for Ravy Laureate. Thank you. You made a very good speech. Thank you. We'll all enjoy it.